The new Dragon Quest anime is criminally underrated. I know I said Dr. Stone was underrated, but at least people are talking about it. The Adventure of Dai was easily one of the best anime in the winter season, and is currently one of the best anime in the spring season, but there's not that many people hyping it up. Which is a shame because this show has insane production quality, reflects everything I love about classic shonen anime, and is a great intro to the Dragon Quest franchise. So in this video, I'm going to explore what makes the Dragon Quest anime so great and explain why you should be watching it. Be warned that this video does contain minor spoilers for the first few episodes. Before I get started, make sure to comment with some of your thoughts on Dragon Quest. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week in the next video. This week's comment goes to Party Jam for sharing their thoughts on the Dr. Stone reboot. If you'd like more Dragon Quest and other anime discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. To get started, let's talk about the production quality. Admittedly, I have never touched a single Dragon Quest game. So when I heard it was getting a new anime, I really didn't have any strong opinions about it. But once a few episodes had aired, I was getting a bunch of people on Twitter telling me just how gorgeous it was. I decided to go ahead and check it out for myself and let me tell you that those people could not have been more right. Everything from the animation to the colors and even the lining of the characters places Dragon Quest a step above most anime in terms of quality. And I'm not just talking about its peaks. This anime consistently puts out high quality episodes. Let me put it this way. You know when you'd be watching Dragon Ball Super and the animation would be absolute dog crap but you'd get those rare fight scenes that looked amazing? Well, cut out all the dog crap, make the whole episode amazing, and that's Dragon Quest. This is honestly what you get with each episode, which you know, not gonna lie, is definitely a pleasant surprise from Toei, but it is also a small example of the larger trend with Toei as far as putting out better looking episodes, especially with everything we're seeing in the Wano anime. But like I said, the Dragon Quest anime is gorgeous. The first episode opens with a very brief but incredibly well animated fight scene, and this level of animation is something we see on a regular basis. There are some instances of CGI, but they're actually pretty good and don't usually kill the engagement with the scene. When we move to the main story, the next thing viewers will notice is the vibrant colors. Part of why Dragon Quest is so addicting is because it uses a wide array of bright colors, making each and every scene aesthetically pleasing. In terms of pacing, I can't really speak to the adaptation rate since I've never read the original manga. But as someone coming in with a blank slate, I'd say that the plot moves at a pretty reasonable pace. Maybe a little slow in the beginning, but things pick up very quickly. On top of all that, Dragon Quest has an incredible soundtrack with openings and endings that are just as underrated as the show. As you can probably tell by now, the consistent quality alone makes Dragon Quest worth watching. But like I mentioned earlier, that's just one reason. Another reason you should watch this anime is because it's a great introduction to the Dragon Quest franchise. Again, I haven't played any of the games, so I really can't speak to how well it reflects their appeal. But just in terms of the Dragon Quest universe in general, this anime is a great way to get started. In fact, most fans like myself wanted to play a game based on the anime just after the first few episodes. And unfortunately, part of the experience with this anime is learning that none of the main games are based on this storyline. Not gonna lie, definitely in my top 10 most depressing moments. Anyway, this anime does a great job of appealing to new fans like myself. Generally speaking, it offers just enough information so that even new fans can put together the pieces. Just in the first few episodes, fans learn a decent chunk about the world and how it works. There's different kingdoms, cultures, and races, all kinds of weapons, items, spells, and sword attacks, and different classes such as the mage, sage, and hero that each have their own unique talents. Now, out of all that, I'd say the spells are probably the biggest appeal. One thing you'll notice is that the spell names are basically just a mix of different sounds and nonsense words like kafriz, which definitely helps Dragon Quest stand out from other magic anime where the spell attacks have names that are just way too long. Plus, I don't know what it is about these spells, but just something about the way the characters shout them feels so much like I'm watching Dragon Ball. You know, look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. We've all shouted Kamehameha here and there. But this is what I mean when I say this anime is a great intro to Dragon Quest. I've never played a single one of the games, and I'm already shouting the spell attacks. And that's part of why this anime is so fun to watch. 
it feels like I'm watching something like Dragon Ball, but with all the classic RPG elements I love, like spells, classes, and kingdoms, that also make each episode feel like I'm actually playing Dragon Quest. But speaking of Dragon Ball, which I may or may not have already mentioned a couple of 50 times, the third reason you should watch Dragon Quest is because it embodies elements of classic shounen anime, but also newer ones like My Hero Academia. For those who aren't aware, The Adventure of Dai is based on a 90s shounen jump manga of the same name by Riku Sanjo and Koji Anada. So while many of the designs for the games came from Akira Toriyama, he actually had nothing to do with this story. Even so, you can't help but notice a lot of similarities between Dragon Ball and The Adventure of Dai. Since this story has the same aesthetic as the games, all the designs look like they could have come out of Dragon Ball. On top of that, the main character Dai has a lot in common with Kid Goku. They both have spiky black hair, they were both dropped off in the middle of nowhere and raised by their adoptive grandfather, and they're both really strong even though they're both, well, vertically challenged. In this sense, Dai is a lot like Goku because he comes from a humble background, is full of energy, and is able to fight lots of strong enemies. And because their grandfathers raised them the right way, both of them have a clear sense of right and wrong throughout the story. But this is where Dai is actually pretty different from Goku. In Dragon Ball, Goku didn't have any big dreams of adventure. It wasn't until he met Bulma that he decided to help her and to leave his home. Even after that happens, Goku's only motivation besides helping his friends is fighting strong opponents, which is why he goes out of his way to fight in martial arts tournaments. So even though Goku does take on more of a heroic role as the story goes on, he doesn't necessarily fight to be a hero. But Dai is different because he's always dreamed of becoming a hero. Even though his grandpa wants him to become a mage, Dai knows he wants to be a hero like the one who saved the world. And this is only reinforced when Dai finally meets that hero, Avon, and becomes his student. Who, by the way, just so happens to have the same voice as Rohan from JoJo's Part 4. I won't spoil anything, but this leads to a pretty blatant JoJo's reference that I'm still pretty pissed that nobody talks about. Anyway, as Dai trains under Avon, he's able to inherit both his fighting style and his sense of justice, eventually becoming the hero he's always dreamed of. And this is what motivates Dai throughout the course of the story. Unlike Goku, Dai doesn't have this natural impulse to fight strong enemies. And he doesn't just fight the bad guys to save his friends. Dai's goal in each episode is always to fulfill his role as a hero. In this sense, Dai is a lot more similar to shounen protagonists like Deku or Naruto who don't just fight to save their friends, but also to defend those in need of saving. And just like those characters, Dai goes through a bit of an identity crisis as he begins to fight more and more enemies. Dai grew up around monsters and they became his family, which leads to some pretty important moral decisions when he actually has to fight some of the monsters. So like many shounen, this anime follows the classic trope of, well, maybe the bad guys aren't so bad after all. But as the story progresses and things get less black and white, Dai is slowly forced to reconsider things and really reflect on his identity. It makes him question who he is, where he comes from, and even what it really means to be a hero. As a result, he starts out a pretty simple character, but becomes a much more interesting and mature character throughout the course of the story. So while the Dragon Quest anime is a lot like the more classic shonen like Dragon Ball or One Piece, it's also a lot like the newer shonen manga that came after it. And this is why this anime is so fun to watch. On top of the fact that it looks gorgeous and does a great job of exposing viewers to the games, the Dragon Quest anime embodies everything great about new shonen as well as the classics. And that's it for this discussion. As you can tell, I love this anime and hope you guys will feel the same way. If you enjoyed this discussion, then make sure to like the video. If you'd like more discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.